Before I talk about the positives and negatives about this game, let me get some important information out of the way first. This is an alpha. <laughs> Oh, this is beautiful. Please, just keep it. This, this is perfect. Everything you see is subject to change. <laughs> no, seriously, the, the, ship it. It's perfect. You don't have to do anything. It's perfect. Please, just leave it be as it is. It's perfect. It's very bare bones. Do not think that's how the game will be at launch. So I just have to tell everyone that this game is still a long way from being released to everyone. So everything I say today quite likely to change in some shape or form in the future. I wonder if I could provide my own artwork. Come on, please. Can can I do it? Come on, I, I'll make some amazing art. Please, L let me do it. So the game you're seeing in front of your eyes is called Combat Champions, a game developed by C77 Entertainment, from what DICE developers from what I heard, a team of 25 people, and I will tell you honestly, I freaking love the premise of this game. Holy crap, this is amazing. I freaking love it. I can guarantee there are going to be nerves here in the second half. After that first round, there would have to be. That's natural in a match this close. How will they operate under this kind of pressure? So it's a first person sure. Imagine taking Battlefield 3 DLC maps and Battlefield 4 DLC maps, you know, just the basics, just the layout and all that kind of stuff, add classes, restrict weapons to specific classes, add some goofy movement mechanics like slingshots to go around the map faster, and that's combat champions for you. We saw how effective they were early in this match. You're right. And this is a brand new round. They have plenty of time to find their groove. Gameplay-wise, doesn't sound too exciting, but the reason why I love this is because the premise of this game is basically satire corporate bullshit. The idea is that this game is about big corporation giants, like imagine Disney or Apple or whatever, like oil companies, insurance companies, marketing departments, having beef with each other, and it kind of became a sports event. You give employees guns, equipment, location, and let them fight for whatever they're fighting for. I got the grievance of the day right here, let's read it. Okay. Vesperium claims that one of Radiant's demolitions caused a layer of shell to collapse at a Vesperium operation, causing massive delays and damage. Radiant denies the charge and states that it was a natural earthquake. Today's grievances are brought to you by Nanopack, the best in healing. Doesn't it make you happy to see an offense come together like this? Oh yeah! Offense, defense, both sides of the field, they're gelling. How many times have you said this over the years? This team is here to stay. Over and over and over again, and I don't get tired of saying it. If you've been watching my videos for ages or been subscribed to Patreon, you know how much I despise big soulless corporations for various reasons, especially when it comes to gaming publishers. But it's something else when you have to take all that cringe you can find in the corporate world and apply it to a first person sure is just something magical. For example, you have fake sponsors everywhere. The commentators are talking like it's a shareholders quarterly meeting. You have them stupid company mascots doing overtime and getting paid barely minimum wage. They're annoying, so you shoot them in the face. And they just get up 5 seconds later like it's nothing. Basically dead inside. I love it. This is the proper corporate bullshit right here. Hey, uh, I hate to ask you this, but I forgot to eat before the show and you wouldn't have to have a dollar bar or something this time around, would you? Every time you respond, commentators say stuff like this. Tonight's response brought to you by Galvano. Feel like a lucky punk with Galvano. My god, it's beautiful. And because of this ridiculous premise, it opens a lot of interesting opportunities for maps, guns, cosmetics. Sky's the limit when it comes to creative freedom. Imagine fake, you know, Disney or fake Apple, Microsoft or whatever as factions. So much potential for some amazing jokes and entertainment. I want to see them take this the next step, alright? I want DLCs, I want regional DLCs for this game. And when I say regional, I mean like, I want I want a British-UK DLC where everybody is, speaks in like that British moniker. And it's just like, British-related business fuckovers that just constantly happen. Like, I can't, I don't have any stereotypical like jokes for that because I don't know too much about UK business. And I'm sure it, it, it's, it has its differences from American business. But for instance, like, there would be... The base game is probably going to be American, so it would be like, you know, uh, the company A is in, uh, Tesla is accusing Honda of IP infringement, you, you know, shit like that. But and that's, then it's that's just what like... they do in the game, that's the fun bit, it's so fucking funny. Gameplay wise, like I said, it feels like a Battlefield inspired game. Maps are big enough for conquest like experience, but they're not too big, would you feel like you're playing Battlefield 2042 again? 
There's only one game mode, which is basically conquest or domination, depending how you call it, with some goofy one life TDM mode with rocket launches or something to determine a winner if it's a draw. And the flow was pretty good. Maybe not enough players for this conquest domination type of mode, but that's mostly because the game is in closed alpha and we never played in full service anyway, so it's not really the game's fault. Gunplay is good, but I have to admit that it has way too much visual recall for my liking, and it's extremely hard to aim sometimes with everything that is bouncing in front of your screen and it's hard to see your enemy and all that kind of stuff. And I play really really badly when I literally can't see what I'm shooting at, even if I see the red outline of the enemy. It, like, it, it just gets visually impairing and I can't focus. Movement is also a bit clunky for my personal liking, speed of the combat is definitely not a problem here, I think it's in a good spot, not too fast, not too slow either, but after playing Call of Duty and Battlefield for so many years, you kinda get used to the smooth and responsive controls that those franchises can offer. Sometimes it felt like I could not run away from a gunfight because controls did not allow me to move left or right or backwards to get some cover. And this is the type of game you expect to to have pretty slick and responsive movement controls, but sadly it's not the case here. But again, this is a very, very early closed alpha build, it's very bare bones, and developers are very eager about the feedback they've been receiving. And like I said, it's made by 25 people and they already have something good at their hands. And there's no vehicles. This is infantry only, which kinda sucks if you ask me. But again, maybe coming in the future, maybe, god knows. Now of course, we need to talk about the big elephant in the room. And I've seen a lot of comments about it and I can't ignore it if I'm doing a first impression video about a game like this. The developers are clearly talented enough to make a game like Battlefield. A game that is infantry focused with classes, big maps and even maybe even vehicles. What's stopping them from applying a realistic art design, a war-torn map, or maps in this case, realistic soldiers in their game while keeping that arcadey feel that they have right now and compete with Battlefield for their player base? And it seems so obvious, right? We have nothing that close to Battlefield in the gaming market, unless it's a Milsim shooter, which is definitely a different gameplay loop and not what Battlefield player base usually seeks, so why can't combat champions do that? Well, it's not really that easy, and I will explain why. I understand that people want a game title that can give them that Battlefield itch that has been missing in the last couple of years, and seeing games like these that are most mostly goofy and more ridiculous in their nature, it just makes people more mad on why no studio wants to make a Battlefield-like game with semi-realistic aesthetic. Unless it's a big brand or big name studio making that game, that Battlefield wannabe game will have a really really hard time of keeping that player base for a really long time, because aesthetics alone or formulaic gameplay loop that we've been playing for the last 10 years, if not more than 20 years, is not that exciting anymore. The so-called arena shooters are not interesting anymore. For example, games like World War 3, I think it's a fantastic game, a really good alternative to Battlefield with good soldier customization and quite rewarding gunplay, and it has vehicles, but no one is playing it. Even though the game has everything a Battlefield player has been asking for for the last 5 years, minus the destruction of course. Or games like X Defiant, a free to play Call of Duty wannabe by Ubisoft. Sounds like a game that is meant to succeed, but a lot of people with a lot of common sense, including myself, are already counting the days when Ubisoft will announce that they're shutting down the servers because no one is gonna play it in a year. The Finals, a game that offers amazing destruction and a very new gameplay loop that is not available anywhere else, is already struggling to keep the player base interested. And that's because there's so many games, so much competition, so many unique and interesting gameplay ideas already in the wild, there's just not enough time to play all these different games. So every new first person shooter is basically an another arena shooter a game where two teams fight each other for, what, 10 minutes on a map for a win that basically means nothing for you mentally is basically dead on arrival. Because we played everything, we've seen everything, it's not exciting anymore to just shoot people. You need something to play for, and I'm not talking about battle passes or whatever. You need something that justifies your time, even if you don't succeed. And that's why people rather play the same games over and over again, because they established and you kind of know what you expect from them in the long run. Now imagine if combat champions had a realistic aesthetic, with realistic military soldiers and realistic premise. Sure, it would be interesting for 10 minutes while watching a YouTube video about the closed alpha, but if the gameplay is the same as I described at the start of the video, two teams fighting each other for a couple of flags with no unique game mode or gameplay loop, what exactly this game has to offer in the long term? There's other games that do the same thing, if not better. That's why a lot of first person shooters are trying to be unique, trying to be different, it needs your attention just to have a chance to do well enough so the studio doesn't get shut down, and that's why the combat champions is the way that it is. And like I said earlier, this is an alpha, 
and there's no release date, and there's a possibility that this game won't even come out until next year. And what is coming out next year? Battlefield. A studio of 25 people. Can it compete with EA's marketing budget? DICE resources. Can C77 Entertainment create a better Battlefield game than DICE next year? Even after Battlefield 2042 disaster, I mean sure, miracles can happen, but are you ready to bet on a miracle? I don't think anyone would. Combat Champions might have a gameplay loop that we're all extremely familiar with, but because it's making fun of corporate life, and it's premise that we haven't seen anywhere in the first person shooter genre, this game might have a fighting chance to survive and do well. I personally liked Combat Champions, I think the gameplay was very satisfying, but clearly the game is still in early development stages, and a lot of things need to be improved. The maps were actually great, the presentation is hilarious, and I think it has potential. I think it has amazing charm behind it, People working on this game are clearly having fun, and that's all it matters, honestly. Like any art, video games are an artistic expression, and it matters a lot if the video game is received well. And if developers believe in their artistic expression, that is Combat Champions, I believe it in it too. I wish them all the best, and I hope the next playtest they're gonna do is gonna be amazing and fun. The FPS genre in gaming market is so saturated, so I can only wish all the best for the studio, and hopefully they will succeed. And that's all I'm gonna say about this game. My name is Tom, also known as The Lanky Soldier. Check out my Patreon for extra content, listen to our podcast on Spotify, that are in the description, and that's kinda it. Stay safe, don't be a douchebag, have a good day, thank you for enjoying this video, and I'll see you in the next one.